Hi everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're updating and recapping some things we've already covered here, so I have a single video to point to in future deep dives. This will prevent constant restating of information here on the channel, and you'll have a great video to refer to if you either need to apply or share these fixes. First, I'm going to actually explain Swap and what it does. And then I'm going to show you the latest version of my script that makes it easier than ever to apply the Swap fix. From there, we'll go over what VRAM is again and walk through how to quadruple the VRAM reserved for the GPU. This part will largely be the same as Cyberpunk's deep dive, since I think that one did a good job at explaining everything. With that out of the way, let's start off with what Swap is. To understand what swap is, first you have to understand a little bit about memory. In a computer, there is short and long-term memory. The long-term memory is stored on hard disk drives, HDDs, or solid state drives, SSDs. In the deck, we have an SSD varying in size from 64 gigabytes to 512 gigabytes. These are used to store lots of data in the long term, but are slow compared to short-term memory. The types of data stored on this are basically endless. Anything that needs to be stored on a computer for any length of time will be saved to long-term memory. The short-term memory of a computer is stored in various stages of random access memory, or RAM. RAM is super fast, but has low capacity and loses its contents when it doesn't get power, which is why we need long-term memory. The use case for RAM is to have some data on hand so the CPU can access it super quick. Without RAM, Everything would need to be fetched from long-term storage every time and the computer would be abysmally slow. Normally, if RAM filled up and you needed more space to store what you're working on, the computer would need to take something out of RAM and then load new data in. This is fine here and there, but in some scenarios, this process can cause issues. One such scenario is gaming. Because we need to have a certain level of maintained performance over a long period of time, any hiccups in this can cause bad frame timing or lower frame rate. So, now that we understand what RAM is, let's go over what a swap file is and why it can help. A swap file, or page file on Windows, is basically an expansion of your short-term memory, stored in long-term memory. This means that it's a lot slower than the RAM, but it provides a buffer for seldom used data that still needs to be at hand. So, let me give you an example to visualize the memory handling on a computer. In this example, let's assume that you're in an office. In this office, there is you and one other person. Let's say that you're trying to tell this person some stats from a game. Your job is to keep track of these stats, including historical data on them. Using this example, we'll have several stages of memory. The first would be what's in your brain right now. You can remember a few stats accurately, but that's about it. Unfortunately, you can't remember all the stats you need to tell the other person. So, you decide that you need to hold a piece of paper with some stats on it. The stats on the paper are easily accessible, but you have to look down and read the paper to fetch them. The paper can store more stats than your brain can, but the space on that one paper is very limited, so you decide that you need a filing cabinet. The filing cabinet can store a ton of stats, and it's all sorted really well. But every time you need to find a certain stat, you need to look up where it is, go to the filing cabinet, deposit your old paper, pull out the correct paper, walk back to the other person, and then you have access to it. You decide that it's really annoying to stop, put your paper away, then grab a new page you need from the filing cabinet, so you bring in a table. On this table, you can spread a few dozen papers out before needing to stack them, so you keep things that you know you'll need soon, but can't hold on to. The pages are sorted and the data is super easy to access, but you still need to get the right one before you can read the stats to the other person. So, after all of this, we have the following. Your brain in this example is the CPU's cache. It's super fast and always available, but has very limited capacity. The paper in your hand is the RAM. It's pretty fast and it's always available. It has better capacity than your brain, but it's still very limited in space. The filing cabinet is the HDD or SSD. It's super slow, but can store tons of data. The table is a swap file. It's close at hand, but slower than holding a paper already. 
It has a decent storage, but not nearly as much as a filing cabinet. Hopefully that example helps visualize each stage of computer memory and it'll give you some background on what I'm going to say next. Swap files, unlike RAM, can be resized easily. Once RAM is installed, that's the total you have. With a swap file, you can choose how much of an SSD to provide as swap at any time. By default, the Steam Deck has a 1GB swap file and 16GB of RAM. In our previous example, this would be like having an end table instead of a big table to spread papers out on. We can resize the swap or table to be whatever size we need, so that's exactly what my script does. Before I give a tutorial for the script, let me give some disclaimers about this process. This process only works in Linux, so Windows on the deck cannot use this. Overutilizing swap technically does wear your SSD out quicker since it has a limited lifespan. That said, this is not concerning for the following reasons. 1. There was already a swap file which would wear through your SSD by default. Increasing the size of the swap file will technically use a larger portion of the disk, but will not use the file more, so the wear will be similar. 2. Modern SSDs have a much longer lifespan than they did a decade ago when SSD wear was a major problem. Major advancements in SSD wear leveling, trim support, and the swap process have mitigated many of the historical risks with doing this. This fix will not be wiped out with OS updates, but will be wiped out with SSD re-imaging. The process is completely reversible. While I don't believe there are any risks to this, I am not responsible for anything that might happen to your deck if something goes wrong. The swap file needs to be on the internal SSD. It cannot be installed to a microSD, nor would you want it to be, since it would limit both performance and microSD longevity. Okay, and with all that out of the way, let's get into the tutorial. First things first, you need to be in desktop mode and make sure you've set your password on the Steam Deck. This means opening terminal and using the PASSWD command. If you've already set it, then you're good to continue. If not, please set it before proceeding. If you've forgotten your password, there's not much I can do, but I've seen a few options on Google, so search for fixes before proceeding. Next, go to the same GitHub page I mentioned in the previous swap file fix video. HTTPS colon slash slash github.com slash cryobyte33 slash steam dash deck dash swap dash resizer. As always, the link will be in the description. Scroll down to the readme and you'll see a link. Right click that and save it to your downloads folder. Now go to your downloads folder and you should see a new file called install swap resizer dot desktop. Double click the file and it'll give you a warning about it being untrusted. If you don't trust me, there's not much I can do, but feel free to read the code in the repo before running the file if you're nervous about it. Click that you trust the author when you're satisfied and my script will be installed. When the terminal window closes, go to the desktop and you should see two new icons. I apologize for using the same icons as everything else, I'll update it when I can. In the meantime, the main script uses the back to gaming mode icon and is named swap resizer. Double click on the icon and a new window will appear. Here, type the password you set in the terminal. I need to make sure I can use sudo before wasting your time, so that's why this window is first. After entering the password, a disclaimer will appear. Please read it, and if you accept the terms, then press yes. Next, you'll get to the actual program itself. It will show you how much space you have available and give you a list of size options to choose from. I chose some that I thought were sensible default. The reason I went with a list here is because some other users reported having parsing issues using the old script, so this should get around any character differences or typos. Click whichever size you prefer. On a 256 or 512 gigabyte deck, I recommend going with 16 gigabytes as I saw the largest performance improvement with it. But if you have limited space or a 64 gigabyte deck, then I recommend choosing the largest option you can use while leaving at least a few gigabytes free on the SSD. Note that if you choose a size bigger than what you have available, the program will exit and not perform any changes. After clicking on the size you prefer, press OK. A progress bar will show up and give you status updates as it goes. 
expect the actual file creation to take between 1 and 40 seconds depending on the size you choose. 16 gigabytes usually takes 18 to 20 seconds to run for me. When the process is complete, it will give you a few commands you could run to confirm it worked, but otherwise press OK. That's it. No more terminal needed. If you ever want to refer to the default swap file size, just run the script again and leave it at the default 1 gigabyte. When the script completes, it'll be like no change was ever made. Last thing before we move on, you can also uninstall the swap resizer using this icon on the desktop. Just double click it and it'll remove the icons from the desktop and the script from the device completely. Alright, now that we've got that done, let's move on to expanding the VRAM. Honestly, I don't think I can do a much better job than last time, so here's a clip from my Cyberpunk 2077 video explaining what VRAM is and how to expand it. Okay, so before we move on to actually doing the VRAM increase, I wanted to explain briefly what VRAM is and how it works with the APU and the Steam Deck. GPUs need their own memory on board to make sure they can store things as quickly as possible. Using regular RAM for a normal PC form factor and a graphics card is way too slow for the high performance we expect nowadays. Basically, an APU is a CPU or processor and a GPU or graphics processor built into the same chip. That's what most consoles, the Steam Deck, and most phones use. In our case, this means that because the APU has to remain small, it has to share memory between the CPU and GPU, which is bad when both the CPU and GPU need as much as they can get. To get around this, there's a limit to how much RAM the GPU can use. In the Steam Deck, the limit is 1GB by default, which isn't enough for larger games and can lead to stutters when swapping data back and forth. Enter our next tweak. By getting into the BIOS of the deck, we can expand it all the way up to 4 gigabytes, quadrupling the memory our GPU has to play with. So let's get started. First, we have to completely shut the deck down. That can be done through the power menu, the same way you go to desktop mode, then wait until the screen goes completely black. Next, hold both the power button and the volume up button until you hear a sound come from the deck, then let them go. Wait a few seconds and you should see a weird looking screen with large buttons on it we need to go to the lower right button, Setup Utility. On this screen, we need to go down one entry to Advanced, then change the UMA frame buffer size from 1G to 4G. Then we can press the Steam Deck Select button and press Yes to save and exit. The Steam Deck will reboot and you should be all done. If you want to confirm, you can run the following command in console. GLX info, pipe grep, dedicated video memory, and see that it's now reading as 4096 megabytes. Note that you have to include the double quotes, and also it is case sensitive. Before we move on, I have some notes about changing the VRAM like we just did. First, this will work for any OS you put on the Steam Deck. Second, this should not be affected by any OS updates, but could be affected by a firmware update. Third, this does technically steal memory from the CPU, meaning that the CPU will only have about 12 gigabytes to use now. Fortunately, with the swap fix from earlier, the CPU still has a total of 28 gigabytes of RAM to use, so that's not nearly as big of a deal as it sounds. Welcome back to present day. With that clip, you saw what VRAM was and how to expand it. Before moving on, I wanted to go over a few things that came up since the last video. First, the deck can actually use up to 8 gigabytes for VRAM by default. The issue is that when the CPU needs more memory, it takes priority. By increasing the setting in BIOS, we disallow the CPU from taking too much. So in practice, we're expanding the total VRAM in all situations where the CPU needs a reasonable amount of memory. In addition, the deck can still use up to 8 gigabytes for VRAM, so there aren't any performance hits to gains that might need that. Lastly, on this point, having more VRAM by default means that we limit the amounts of swapping we need to do for graphics-specific data like models and textures. This frees up the SSD for more CPU-centric swapping and can help with CPU performance if it needs more than 15 gigabytes as a result. Second, I didn't know this existed at the time of filming the previous video, but you can see the VRAM in SteamOS directly. Go to Settings, System, 
and then scroll down to the bottom of the hardware section, and you can see the VRAM size. I left the old way in the clip for completeness, but this way is much simpler. That's it for VRAM expansion. I'd like to quickly mention that my previous video, the Cyberpunk 2077 Deep Dive, is a great show of what I'd like to do going forward. If you want to see what these fixes can do with a modern AAA game, then please go give that video a watch. Alright, that's everything for this one guys. I'm going to reference this video in several upcoming deep dives to keep them a little more relevant to each game, and hopefully the new swap file process is easy enough that anyone can use it even without a keyboard. About the channel going forward, I wanted to let you guys in on what's been going on and a little bit about my life. If you've watched any of my streams, you'll know that my name is Kyle, and I'm a full-time DevOps engineer. I actually just started in a new contract this week, so it's been a little chaotic, but I've been writing scripts and everything whenever I get the chance. I've really been enjoying creating content for all of you, and I have a ton of stuff planned as I mentioned before, but the upload schedule will likely be at once every week or two depending on how big of a video it is. Hopefully that's enough for you guys, but I'll try to get them out as much as possible without wearing myself thin. As for the immediate future of content here, I have a few deep dives planned. I think that they play to my strengths and I can really help you guys get the most out of your Steam decks. I plan on doing something similar to the Cyberpunk deep dive last week, but including some battery testing and some other game specific tweaks. As always, if you like the content, please eat the subscribe thingamajig, drink the like doohickey, praise the bell vigorously, and leave a comment by going outside and shouting into the uncaring void. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.